we are promoting history even though it was a shadow, a dark shadow on the city of Collinsville. Even though it was a dark shadow, we are going to remember it by this memorial that we're placing here. By means of this small marker, the Collinsville community will finally take some ownership of the Robert Prager lynching, which occurred April 5th, 1918. In 1918, Collinsville was, uh, uh, was an unstable community. It had uh, uh, a lot of labor tension related to the St. Louis uh, lead smelting and refining works. You had uh, pretty radicalized miners unions. Collinsville had, I believe, about 30% uh, or so uh, immigrant population or first generation Americans. And we had a lot of transient workers in town. Therefore, that leads to community instability also. Prager essentially wanted to get a job as a, as a coal miner. Uh, by trade, he was, he was a baker. So he worked for a baker uh, in town here, uh, Lorenzo Bruno. But he had heard of the great wages that miners were, were making during World War I because of the wage settlement uh, with the federal government. The U.S. government engaged in a propaganda effort uh, unseen uh, since uh, to build support for engaging in World War I. Uh, U.S. was primarily an isolationist nation prior to that. Felt it had to do this, particularly in the heartland, to uh, develop support for becoming involved in World War I. And uh, so it was all sorts of over-the-top accusatory that uh, any immigrants, particularly any, any of those of German uh, background, could not necessarily be trusted, that they might be spies and so forth. So the federal government's propaganda certainly helped lay the groundwork for this. Prager was taken away from them by the police. They went back and demanded that Prager be turned over to them. The mayor and uh, some other community leaders put up a valiant fight, but several members stayed to search uh, City Hall and the police department, and the men found him. He was marched west on Main Street to St. Louis Road, and then marched out to St. Louis Road. Sadly, a lot of these patriotic parades were calling, when a when person was draped in the flag, and ordered to sing patriotic songs or chant uh, patriotic phrases. Th those were happening all over Southern Illinois. They had happened in Maryville. They had happened in Collinsville previously. Uh, men were challenged in the saloons at night. Uh, they arrived at this location out of city limits and no longer followed by the city police, but they couldn't find tar to tar and feather him. And they felt they had to do something. And one man goes to a vehicle up here, finds a rope and the coil of rope was used to lynch Robert Prager. So many people stood by, and leaders in the community, businessmen, uh, and all, at least one alderman watched. Uh, the police had gone back home, uh, gone back to their station. Uh, the, the crime was that the, that the good people did not react. The trial was a, was a second crime, you could say, in and of itself. Uh, basically acquitted in the actual jury time, probably less than 10 minutes. One of the jurors remarked after the verdict was returned that, uh, well, no one can say we aren't patriotic now.
where the tree sat was about where the cemetery entrance sign is, the brick cemetery entrance sign. Uh, we made a request to the St. John Cemetery Board. They were gracious enough to allow this marker to be installed in the cemetery. A great lesson to be learned is that, that people should not be judged just by their ethnicity any more than they should be judged by their religion or their skin color. Then we still have that fight out there today and we need to, uh, we need to make that go away.